Here it is. The final pieces of the puzzle. The off-road designs, link kit, brackets, straps, himes, Johnny joints, the Yukon axle shafts. We're good to go. Got my lockers, I got my coils, I got my springs, I got my bumps, I got my hubs. I just gotta get at it. So that's what we're gonna do. It's been a long time since I've really got my hands dirty and I'm looking forward to diving back in there again. I think I owe my UPS driver a high five for all the work he's been doing. This stuff is not light. And apparently, it's all gonna fit on my truck somewhere. Stay tuned, this is gonna get rad. all the stuff. I'm going to give you guys a quick dive into what we've got here and then we're going to talk about the links. I'm going to give you guys a real high level on why I ended up with the link kit that, that I did. So starting front to back, got my Bilstein coils. Hopefully you guys have seen the video on my coilovers. If not, I'll put a link in the description down below. You can go check it out. And uh, I go into a lot more detail about choosing spring rates and various parts of the system and coils versus leaves and things like that. So check that out. Got the bump stops to limit the travel at the end of the compression stroke. I've got the ORD link kit, shock hoops, brackets, pan hard bar, pan hard, limiting straps, rear truss, all the Johnny joints, the whole thing is here triangulated forelink in the back, like that, and parallel forelink up front. I'm gonna get into a little bit later exactly why I chose that over the building your own, ordering parts and just babbling it up to yourself. In the axle, I'm gonna be doing quite a lot of that work in that Dana 60 up front. I'm gonna pull the limited slip out and I'm gonna put an electronic locker in there. The electronic locker will obviously give me full locked or full open at a flip of a switch. I've also upgraded to 35 spline instead of the traditional 30 spline that comes in the um, CUCV axle shafts. Went to a hardened chromoly, went to the Yukon Hardcore hubs on the outside, also 35 spline. And in subsequent videos, I think I'm gonna jump into some metallurgy and explain in my understanding the differences between 4340 and uh, 4030 and all the different kinds of metal you get. Let's jump into this ORD kit and I'll explain why I landed here. You can get a kit for cheaper. You can go and just buy the hardware and try and build it yourself. And a lot of people do that with a lot of great success. I am limited on time. And so I want to be able to put this kit in know that it works, know that it's been set up correctly, and know that somebody has already done the math to A, make sure it fits, make sure it drives properly, make sure the travel is available, and make sure nothing interferes with the underside when you're going through your compression and rebound stroke. So I kind of look at link kits as, you've got five or six objectives to the ride of your vehicle that you're expecting your suspension to accommodate. It's going to be ride quality off-road. You don't want a suspension setup that's going to lift the inside tires. You go around every corner. Some guys might, but I think that would be rather dangerous driving on the road as much as I do in my truck. You also want something that's going to steer properly. The steering is a huge part of any linked system. And if you change your caster, which is the forward rotation of the tires and the knuckles in correspondence, you can get suspension and steering that can become very touchy, very quick, very problematic, and very unpredictable. So there is so many facets and angles when it comes to building a link kit, from placement to link separation angle, to link length, to basic placement so that you don't hit your drive shafts under, under compression or rebound. There's just so many variables that I thought it was best left up to the professionals 
who have designed this kit know what vehicle it's going on, know what it's going to do and how it's going to work. And that's why I went with the ORD kit. Steven and the rest of the guys at ORD are hardcore square body lovers. They know these things inside and out, and I leaned upon them and their expertise to get me the components that I needed to get the truck to where I want it to be. So let's jump into the various parts of the system and I can show you guys what it all came with. So let's get into the how and why of the off-road designs link kit. As I mentioned earlier, there are tons of options out there. You can get a truss, some axle mounts, some heims, some tubing, go bend your own and you'll be all good if you know what you're doing. I just don't have the time to really invest in understanding all the geometry, lengths, placement of everything on the four link setup to get it to perform the way you want it to. There is so much stuff when it comes to braking with anti-dive or anti-squat or caster and camber that can be altered with very small changes to this setup. With off-road design, I knew that Steven had designed this to work on his K30 truck. I know I'm gonna be satisfied with it. I know he's done all the hard work and that's not even counting all of the axle brackets that jig onto the axle give you mounting, give you strike plates for the bump stops, give you positioning of the hymes. It's all done and thought out for me. And that was a huge selling point. And here you can see we got some close up on the axle brackets that come with the off-road designs kit. This is a game changer right here. I know it doesn't look like much or it probably looks like a whole ton of stuff, but what this enables me to do is be confident that everything is located on the axle correctly. You can see in the cutouts down below that they are designed to key onto the axle itself. This plate right here is going to rest on the U-bolt bracket that is already on. Sorry, I guess the leaf spring bracket that is already on the axle. And coming over here, you'll see on the driver's side, you got your shock mounts right here. The hymes will bolt in upper and lower right there. And then you got your strike pad for your bump stops. Really cool design. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of this. It takes a lot of the measuring and cutting and building and fabbing that I just wanted to get this on and get back to driving my truck. Off-road design coming through for me. And there you have it, all of the stuff that I need, the axle brackets, the bumps, the shocks. I got no excuses anymore. I still need the truck for a couple more weeks. I got some things I gotta do with it before I can really dive into it and start tearing it apart. But as you can see, I'm no longer waiting on stuff. Stuff is waiting on me. It's time to get busy, get my hands dirty, and uh, swear and curse in my garage repeatedly. Thanks for watching Merrick's Garage. I'll see you next week. Peace.